roses it's like roses and today i am doing it the very long waited and highly requested repaint tutorial <laughs> video I am going to be repainting the Schleich of retired Dartmoor mare and I re-customized her mane and, uh, and I'm changing her into a fjord and basically I'm going to be doing a separate video on customization for manes and tails and just like body parts in general because I think it's a really long and complicated subject that I don't want to combine in one video so this is just going to be exclusively a repaint video so pretty much I um, customized her mane and then I painted her but when I did the shading and stuff I used pastels and it kind of came out a little grainy and I wasn't really happy with it so I wanted to redo it in addition for some reason my primer wasn't really working right so the color ended up getting scratched off and it just didn't look good so I really wanted to redo her because she's really lovely and beautiful so you don't need anything like super specific just like a horse that you want to repaint if you're looking for a place to buy um, models that you can repaint check out this video that I recently uploaded I always will repaint horses that have like really big scratches or things like that so if you see a original like horse that has like a lot of scratches or you just like want to make a different color horse um it's a great way to decide the first thing in the materials that you will need i'm gonna like go through the materials as i go through the steps because i just find that easier and also i don't have all my materials out here so the first thing that we'll be doing is um priming the horse so i use this it's called brustoleum and it is a two times cover primer and it will work on plastic. It doesn't have to be necessarily this specific brand. I've just found it to work and you just want like some sort of primer and I prefer the white color, although you could probably use other colors like black if you're just doing um, black horse, a black horse. But I think that white is a really good base if you're gonna be doing like paints or pretty much any other color. So as you can see, I have a lot of other horses um, that I am also, doing right now so um basically you just put your horse down you want to do it on some sort of cardboard or something just so that you won't get like the paint anywhere important and um before you like spray you want to make sure that all like of the dust or like anything is off of the horse like you don't want to spray the dirt because it will seal everything on with the horse so and you want everything to be like semi-flat and it looks like okay we're good so let's spray so just make sure to shake your can um well and like follow all the directions and everything okay and now we will spray and just want to like cover all the all the as much as you can um sometimes i will have to do like two coats just to get like the top side and then the underside um and you know go from different angles just try to get it all sprayed if you can but don't Wet if you don't get it all in one go and you don't want to like overdo it uh, especially I try to go lighter on the face just because this is like a little bit of a thick primer which I like um, especially when I'm doing like customization because it will smooth it out a little bit um, but just make sure not to, to get it like too much on the areas that you want to remain like detailed like for example on this horse I will uh, not spray as much on the face because I want the vein to still be visible and I don't want it to get like too covered up if You know what I mean? So yeah That is the first step of your repainting process All right, so I've recently started using a airbrush for some of my models So I just wanted to go through like the pieces that I use for my airbrush 
Okay, so the first thing that I will use is an air pump. And um, this is obviously to pump the air. I'm not like a professional air brusher. I really don't know that much about it, but I've used it a few times. So I'll try my best to explain everything, but it's a little tricky sometimes. Um, so basically you have this attachment and this is like the hose. So it will pump the air and then you will attach it to the airbrush that you're using. So this is the airbrush that I use. And honestly, like I don't think the brand really matters, but this is a master airbrush. Um, so I have like the airbrush and then uh, it has a bunch of different needles. I'm not 100% sure what the different needles do. I think it's just like different size um, paint that will come out. And what you'll do is you'll put your paint in here and then you connect this part of the hose to the bottom of the airbrush. So you just connect it on by screwing it like this. And um, as you guys may have known, before I had this kind of airbrush, I had a like handheld one, but I found that it really didn't work well. Um, it's probably because I was not using airbrush paint, but I felt like it died like whenever I was really starting to like work on something because it was like handheld, so it didn't have any sort of connection to a cord. In contrast, this has like a plug, so you can plug it in and then it will stay on as long as you have it plugged. Okay, so when you press down on this, you should hear like a kind of a buzzing noise. And that is the air coming out. And when you move it back and forth, the needle tip should be moving back and forth as well. And if you are having a lot of like troubles with your airbrush, I really don't, I'm not an expert in any way, shape or form. So I would suggest for you to look online at some other some sort some other sort of source. One of the things I have definitely learned from my experience is that you really need um, model airbrush paint if you have an airbrush. I tried using acrylics and then just using paint thinner and it just doesn't make the paint thin enough. And a lot of it has to do with like the grain, like the, the material of the paint size, like it just won't go through and like it just won't work as well so i definitely recommend if you're going to be using an airbrush you will really it's a lot easier to just use model airbrush paint and this paint is um the brand is Val vallejo um and it's made in barcelona spain and it's really amazing i really like this and this is just called the model air set but you can really get any kind of airbrush paint set that you want this is just i know a popular set uh because it has a lot of browns and like horse colors and a lot of horse um, repainters using airbrushes don't necessarily want like the primary colors like red, blue, purple, like because our horses are not, unless you're making fantasy horses, which is pretty cool too. I think that should definitely be more of a thing. But um, if you're just airbrushing like a traditional colored horses, you're gonna want the sort of like browns and grays and that kind of um, colors. I also have um, just like normal acrylics, which I was using earlier, but they're still not the same as the model air kind so make sure if you're using an airbrush that you get the air the model air version but if you're just painting by hand um the normal acrylics are really really good for painting and for the normal acrylics they have a set called equestrian colors and that's the set that i use and this is the um model air set weathering colors and again really any airbrush paint will do this is just the set that i'm using and there are probably a bunch that work um the same and probably before you have set all of this up um I really seriously recommend finding some sort of reference picture. So I'm actually going to be switching off to a different model because the gray riding pony is still riding. So I'm going to be um, re recoloring this mare whose name is Estrella. You guys probably know uh, or have seen her and I'm just repainting her because some of her paint got a little funky. So that is the I will be using since she is a fjord I will be using this picture as a reference and you can print out pictures of horses online or basically do whatever you want but it's really really helpful to have some sort of reference so you know where the highlights and the shadows of the color are and just so you can get a really good color match okay so now basically what I will do is I will set up my reference picture near where I'm painting and I like to paint on this it's a rotating tray so I can just rotate it instead of like touching the horse or waiting for one side to dry I can just do it all at once by rotating the sides so um, basically what you will do is you have your air brush um, and then the paint will go in the cup so we are making like a kind of lightish beige I will always look at the color um, and then I'll mix it in the cup and then I'll usually spray in like an area not on the horse just to make sure that I'm getting a good color. All right, so we're going to start by painting just the corner edge and making sure that the paint is coming out. And indeed it is coming out really well. So you 
can see on the edge there, it's coming out and that's pretty similar to the color that I am looking to achieve. So let's get started. So I'm um, just gonna roll up my sleeves here. It's super hot, oh my goodness. Um, so uh, basically I'm not gonna touch the horse. I'm gonna try as little to touch um, just because you don't want the paint like getting sponged or anything. So let's get started. And it's always scary, I feel like because you don't want to mess it up um, but don't forget that you can always you know start over again sometimes what i would like to do is like just get it started over on another area and then once i can see that the paint is flowing out nicely i will start more on the horse um and it looks like it's coming out a little spotty right now so i'm not really sure why um so i'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of um airbrush flow improver and this is just uh, something I got on Amazon. It's, it will improve the flow of your airbrush. So let's try this. So I'll just open that and um, add a little bit of this. Oh, of course it's not open. Uh, one of the really handy things about this airbrush is that it has like a, an area where you can just kind of like set it inside this little container. So that's really helpful. All right. so. Now I have this open, so I'm just going to put in some flow improver into the cup with the paint. And once you do something like this, it can be very helpful to place your finger over this area here, the nozzle, and then just put your finger on and go back and it will create bubbles. That will also make sure, that will let you know that it's actually like blowing out if it's not clogged or anything. I will do that usually if there's any clog. So let's see if that made any difference. That will also mix your paint, so. And every once in a while, I like to um, just take it off, take off this little piece, because sometimes some of the paint will get stuck up onto the, around the pin, and you need to just take it off and in order for the paint to come out. Um, it can also be most helpful to use like, a piece of paper towel just to get rid of um, any excess on the uh, outside just by you know, very gently rubbing it because you don't want to destroy the needle in any way. And then sometimes you need to go even further onto the, um, taking the second piece of the nozzle off just to make sure that everything is okay and then you can also clean using this part here. Okay, so now we will screw these back on and see if that made any difference. Um, I can definitely tell you guys this is not like a super like fast thing to learn um, or at least it's not for me. I've been trying to really successfully do this for quite a while now and still obviously I'm not perfect at it in any way shape or form. So let's see if it's going to in here. All right, there we go. This is the flow that we want. We don't want it splattery or anything. Perfect. So let's get this going and stay with it. All right, so let's, we want to stay like kind of far back just because um, the color is pretty, like, pretty strong. Um, but, so you just want to get into the areas that you want colored. And, um, yeah, I don't really know how to explain this too well, but as you can see, I'm like, trying to stay with the picture here, which is showing me that there's not like a lot of downward um, color. There's like more white underside, so I'm just trying to do that. And if you feel like the flow is not coming out, you can always stop and like try just spraying on, um, on, oh, there's, um, on the, on the area. Sometimes I do like to just pick up the horse just because it's just easier, but you just want to be careful that you're not touching any paint or anything. Um, and I like to kind of like go in circles. I don't know if that's like a thing or not, but yeah. Um, so now we'll kind of like turn to the other side here. Um, and like usually we'll go like by the tail and grab them. <laughs>
her now and just to let her um i'm gonna seal her just to keep this paint where it is the varnish i use is called testers dull coat and um i get this on amazon it's a little expensive but it works really well so i'm just gonna spray her with a coat of this just to keep all the paint from scratching hey guys i'm back and i've changed my setup a little bit I'm going to be looking up a picture of a viewer just to get the correct um, colors and everything. And I just moved in my room just because I feel like the lighting in here is a lot better and I can see what I'm doing and also I won't have to worry about how hot it is outside. Okay, so um, I printed, I made and printed these um, paint swatches. so. I can tell like what shade I want and everything from um, these airbrush paints that I have because even though they have like the color on the outside of the bottle, I still find it's a little bit tricky to tell like the color that's actually going to come out. So I airbrushed on some black uh, according to where the black was on my reference picture. Unfortunately, a little bit of it kind of splattered up on the stomach, which is really annoying, but my airbrush was kind of having a moment. Um, and yeah, so right now I'm just going to be using some black uh, apple barrel paint, which you can find uh, pretty much any like Walmart or anything. And I'm just going to use that to touch up the black uh, just because it's not like completely consistent in all locations. So I'm just going to use a handheld paintbrush and basically just touch up those areas right now. So for brushes, I have a lot of different brushes of uh, different sizes. They're all just acrylic brushes. It doesn't really matter what kind of brushes you're getting. Um, I have like thicker brushes uh, for base coats and then I have really tiny um, brushes for just fine detailing and just a wide variety of brushes for whatever pattern is pretty much the best. Um, these are a matte type of acrylics uh, from the same brand as the airbrush paint that I use, but these are just acrylics, they're not airbrush paints. Um, and I really like using these, they're really pigmented and they have a really smooth finish. Another type of paint that I experimented with that I wasn't that big of a fan is Liquitex. It dries, like, since it's a heavy body acrylic, it will pretty much just dry in the shape that you paint it on. Same with these guys, which I will occasionally use for small details. And then I have a ton of these Apple Barrel paints, which are, they're decent for some things, but um, I wouldn't really recommend using them unless you're on, like, a really low budget uh, repainting for repainting, just because they dry kind of chalky, and I feel like they're a lot better for wood crafts. So these are the pastels that I used. They're called pan pastels. They're super duper pigmented. You can get them on Amazon. Um, in addition to the pan pastels, I will also use 
Prismacolor pastels and what I will do is I'll take a little knife and I'll just shave it up into some really fine pigment and I'll just use that with basically um, these are all of the pastel brushes that I have and I will use like makeup brushes or just like really soft kind of brushes. <laughs> of pastel before I'm going to do a spray of varnish. I will just dust the horse off lightly just to get off any like excess pastel and so it won't dry on clumpily or anything. So typically after I add a layer of pastels I will use my varnish and that will just keep the pastels um, on the layer and then we'll seal it on and you can actually build up on the layers um, once you have finished sealing it and then let it dry to make a more pigmented color if you don't have super pigmented pastels. And this is a great way to build up pigment and you can um, use this as an alternative method to using an airbrush. It just is a lot more complicated and it can be more um, time consuming. This is the paint that I will use for the horseshoes and this is just basics uh liquitex acrylic color and this is like a really kind of like thick durable um paint that is very pigmented so it shows up really well on hose so i recommend this and i got this at ac moore a local craft store <laughs> and eyes and hooves I use this gloss varnish which is just acrylic resin and I just put it over on top of the eyes and hooves and just a word of warning like it will make basically whatever it touches shiny so you want to really be careful about where you're getting on the eye and where you're getting it on the hooves as well and it takes a little bit to dry but once it does it's pretty shiny and it will leave just like a glossy coat on the end Another word of warning is when you're using this stuff, it completely ruins your brushes and it will become really stale and brittle. So make sure you just like use either like a, a um, toothpick or just one like allocated brush for this task because it will completely ruin the brush. And this is the final result. Um, so this is the repainted version of Estrella. Uh, and who knows, one day I may repaint her again just to try and fix these stupid things that happened from the airbrush exploding all over the place. But I think it's okay, I don't think any horse is really ever perfect, but I think she looks pretty cute. And I'm pretty happy with her, maybe not so much on this side, I might try and redo this part of the airbrushing. Um, but this side I'm pretty happy with, so... So I still have a few commission slots open. So if you are interested, please message me through Etsy. And if you are looking for one of these commission slots, you need to be sending me pictures. Um, and in addition to that, the prices that I set for them are not negotiable. I've had a lot of people say, well, I can't pay for that. Well, then I'm sorry, but you can't buy it. Um, uh, and I don't begin making the order until you actually purchase what you're buying so you need to make the purchase and then i will start making your order okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video please do check out my etsy a lot of the listings that i've recently posted have sold out pretty quickly but i still have some pretty cool stuff up on there and there will be more coming soon thank you guys so much for watching please follow me on my instagram and watch my other videos on youtube all right bye Mwah.